Welcome everyone, this is Mark from Whiskey Whistle, bringing you Whiskey Review 21. Today with us we're going to be looking at Ben Romuk and uh, their uh, standard bottling, which is the 10-year-old. Uh, anyway, uh, again, I have to thank all of you for uh, subscribing and for commenting. Uh, it's really encouraging and, well, uh, it's really pushing me to keep going with this, so uh, thank you very much. Um, please do let me know. If, uh, if there's a bottle that you'd like to see, or, um, or something different, perhaps a, a different spirit. Uh, as you may have seen in the um, upcoming whiskeys video that I did in, for 20.1, uh, there's going to be some uh, cognac, some uh, eau de vie, and some other sorts of spirits that will appear. So uh, keep, uh, keep watching, okay? Uh, anyway, let's carry on with, with the show, shall we? Ben Romick 10-year-old. Now, this is quite a lovely bottle. Very elegant styling. I'll bring that close for you to see. And uh, you may notice a little uh, sticker on there. And, well, that's from a Hong Kong International Wine and Spirit Competition in 2012. And this won a trophy. So that may not be on a bottle uh, from where you are. And what an elegant canister as well. Uh, copper colored to showcase the importance of copper to uh, Scotch whiskey. And uh, well, we'll look at that a little bit later. Now this is 43%, so a little more than the standard 40, not quite up to the craft presentation percentage of 46. I believe it is chill filtered, at least a little bit, and perhaps there is a little bit of color in there, but again, not much. Uh, so, um, well, that's great, I think. Uh, one step further, they may do better with that, and probably we'll see that in the future, I would imagine. Uh, this is a smaller distillery. In fact, uh, they boast the smallest stills in Speyside. Uh, anyway, let's get right into the pouring. And here this says, matured in hand-selected oak casks. Now, I'm not sure if there's any other way to select oak casks, but uh, anyway, it sure sounds nice, doesn't it? Okay, so let's uh, let's pour a little, little bit of that one. Oops, that's a short pour. There we go. That's about 20 milliliters. And I always like to catch the drip on the bottle there. Uh, okay. Put that cork back in there. There it is. I bought some new duds, so I'm showing those off today. I've got to go to work a little bit later. Uh, it's, uh, well, it is after lunch here, so don't be thinking that I'm uh, doing some morning drinking at all, because I'm not. Uh, I'm generally opposed to drinking in the morning, although I suppose uh, some people may have to, such as uh, the Jim Murrays or the, um, uh, the Ralphies of the world, who may have to... Uh, head out and have a dram in the morning because that's the only time they have for those professional whiskey reviewers. I'm going to let that sit for just a moment. Now one thing I noted when when you pour a glass of Ben Romuk, uh, you're going to notice that the room will fill with a uh, wonderful aroma. And uh, what I thought was, boy, it smells sweet uh, there's a little bit of peat, and there's some uh, vanilla extract uh, that's really wafting off of uh, off of the drink. Uh, so isn't that nice? Quite aromatic. Um, while we're waiting, uh, I'll just read through the bottle. So I mentioned that's matured in hand-selected oak casks. Uh, this is from Speyside. In fact, in fact, uh, from um, uh, Morey Morayshire, Morayshire, Morayshire. I think it's sure. So from Morayshire, um, it, um, it's from the, the Forez, uh, near the, the town of Forez, I believe. I wrote that down here somewhere. Uh, well, it's there somewhere. We'll get to that. And um, this is the 10-year-old, as I mentioned. Ben Romuk is now owned by Gordon and McPhail, who are independent bottlers. Uh, on the back, we'll just read through this once. Ben Romick is carefully handcrafted at Speyside's smallest distillery by just two men using the finest Scottish barley and the purest spring water from the nearby Romuck Hills. Golden in color with a soft, mellow character, this single malt combines soft, fruity notes 
with a rich sherry influence and gentle peat smoke to deliver an exceptional whiskey experience. The secret of Ben Romick is, not, is too good to keep and perfect to share. Okay, and um, well, this won a Queen's Award for Enterprise uh, International Trade 2009. Um, and here it says, Gordon and McPhail is the trading name of Speyside um, Whiskey Distributors Limited, owners of Ben Romick Distillery. Please share Ben Romick responsibly product of Scotland. There you are. Okay. Well, uh, let's carry on with the, the nosing and the tasting. Nosing to smell the whiskey. As I mentioned, vanilla extract. Some raisins. It's funny, less peat than I noticed a little while ago. I think the peat note is something that um, will disappear over time uh, if you let the whiskey sit too long. Okay, carry on to my notes here. Mm hmm. And um, there's an apple note there and also limes. So it's got a nice tartness to the nose. And um, this may seem a little funny, but there's a leather note there. And I swear that this smells like uh, a luxury car, a new, the new car smell of a luxury car. And you may think, well, I don't want that in my whiskey. But you know what? It works. It really does. A little bit of pepper. The raisins, though, they're kind of in the background. Uh, I'm getting more apples and limes as far as fruits go. Anyway, uh, let's try that one now. Happy Whiskey Wednesday, if it's still Whiskey Wednesday where you are. It's already Thursday here, so happy Thursday to you. Hmm. When you try this neat, you'll find it tart and a little bit sweet. Um, it's quite dry. It's got a little bit of pepper in there. And there's a smokiness to it, um, as well as lightly smoked apples. And what I wrote here is that I find this somewhat like um, a milder, not milder, not meaning that it's less uh, less powerful, but um, milder in peat, um, a milder Lafroig, interestingly enough. Uh, the finish is somewhat dry. The dryness uh, lasts quite a long time, some mild peat and um, uh, some candy apple in there. So burnt sugar plus apple, um, not quite burnt sugar, but caramelized sugar. Um, now, what I find best about uh, this bottling, I'm going to put a little bit of water in there. I find this really excels with water. So I'm going to put about one and a half little teaspoons, so about seven and a half milliliters. Uh, so this will take it well into the 30s. Mix it around a little bit. Um, I just love this with water. Um, and with a fair bit. Uh, some whiskeys take only a drop or two and some take more. This one can definitely do with more water than less. Uh, and the point is, is not not necessarily the um, uh, boy. I hope my hope my speaker's working. I didn't check it. Oh my goodness. Um, <clears throat> the point is not not the alcohol percentage, but it's the flavors. And the flavors uh, are not always um, equivalent to 
the alcohol percentage. Alcohol does carry a lot of flavor, but that totally depends on the distillation of, uh, of the whiskey. Uh, okay, so let's try that with the water now. Maybe I should have a little bit of water first myself. I think I will. I always spill with this stupid spoon. All right. So with water, the sweetness really comes to the foreground. There's more vanilla, there's less peat, it's sweeter, uh, and now I'm getting some ripe apples. There's still a little bit of raisin uh, in there, and less of a leather note. Um, Now it smells like a, a new luxury car uh, with a bag full of sweets in it. Okay, uh, let's taste that now. Cheers again. Hmm. Big sweetness. It's less tart, not so dry, and um, the smoked apples are still there. Now it's less, less Lafroigi, and more like. Um, uh, a space side or um, uh, a sweeter uh, East Highland whiskey. Hmm. And uh, for the finish, still quite dry. There's a sweet maltiness there. And um, well, it's a little subjective, but I wrote here zucchini bread with walnuts. Uh, and of course, you have to put a little bit of butter. Um, and the peat is a little bit milder. Uh, than before. Uh, so, um, so that's Ben Romick, 10 year old. Uh, and again, we're looking at, um, well, a wonderfully made product here. I think they could do with stepping it up, uh, go to 46% and uh, give it the, uh, the craft, um, uh, all the craft effects that, that are necessary, uh, un labeling it as unchill filtered or not chill filtering it rather, and uh, and showing the natural color might be might be best, especially given its small volume. Hmm. Okay. Overall, what I wrote here, really nice, especially with water. Uh, I would love to try this with less peat. Uh, I think that could also be a winner. Uh, and I've uh, I, I've written here plus plus on the nose, uh, one plus on the taste. Uh, a slight, slight minus on the on the finish. Um, it's predominantly just the dryness that's there. Most of all, uh, the other flavors seem to to really disappear quickly. And uh, presentation, uh, well, again, I think that's one other detriment uh, to this uh, this this whiskey. Better than being forty percent, no doubt. Thank you very much for that. But let's bump it up one more notch, shall we? Okay, and uh, 85 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle score for Ben Rumick, 10 year old. 85 out of 100. Okay, now uh, a little more about the distillery before we uh, wrap things up here. So, this was founded in 1898 um, by two gentlemen, uh, Duncan McCallum and F.W. Brickman. Uh, I mentioned near Forez in Mauritius. Uh, the water comes from the Chapleton Springs in the Romac Hills, as I mentioned earlier. And even though it opened in 1898, it didn't begin distilling until 1900. Um, and, uh, and then it closed. Uh, and 1911, new owners, Harvey McNair and co., uh, they got it running again up until uh, the beginning of the First World War. Um, and uh, it started again after World War I. 
uh, and then it exchanged hands a bunch of times and then finally closed again in 1983. Not only closed, but dismantled. 1993, Gordon and McPhail, they uh, rescued the distillery and it was completely restored with, uh, I believe, new stills in 1997. Uh, it was designed to be operated by one man, the new design, although as I read earlier, now there's two people operating the distillery. It was officially reopened by uh, Charles, Prince of Wales, in 1998, and bottling began in 2004. So this 10-year-old would all have only come out, uh, I guess, in roundabout, well, uh, 1998, 2008 or so. Um, anyway, I wonder what the older bottles uh, would compare, uh, how they would compare to, to this one. So, and if you're watching, there's the distillery right there. I've got a little uh, a CD stuck to the chair. And there's the location. A CD stuck to the chair so I can see what's going on there. I have to come up with something uh, new as far as how to get uh, some of these um, images up. There are the stills. So the smallest stills in Space Side. Hmm. And uh, that gentleman, oh goodness, where's his name? His name is Keith. Keith, Keith, Keith. Oh boy. Mark, Mark, Mark. Um, oh goodness, it's gone. Uh, well, he, he is now a member of um, an elite group uh, called, uh, what is it called? The Keepers of the, Keepers of the Quach, Quake. Keepers of the Quake, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. You can help me out with that, please. Uh, which is an elite group by invitation only of people who have been selected that are uh, kind of um, given the task of preserving and promoting uh, the uh, Scotch whiskey uh, industry and uh, the craft of it all. Uh, so, uh, Keith, Mr. Keith, Mr. oh, goodness sakes. Ah, uh, very uh, disappointed in myself. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, sir, for your fine work, and thanks for watching. Again, this is Mark from Whiskey Whistle. Please subscribe if you've enjoyed what you if if you've enjoyed what you've seen. I've stumbled over that one, and uh, share this with your friends. Over and out. We'll see you next time.